Nowadays, narrowboat living is becoming more and more of a popular idea, but narrowboat life and off-grid life in general isn't for everyone. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through 10 reasons why you should absolutely not buy a narrowboat. And before you start thinking this is gonna be a very negative video because of the title, I am gonna walk you through 10 reasons why you should. So that hopefully you have a balanced, well-rounded view of the pros and the cons, and then you can make your decision from there. Reason number one, narrowboats can be very expensive to purchase and to maintain. So if you're looking at wanting a boat that you can just move aboard instantly, you're looking for a decent one upwards of about £35,000. They tend to go upwards from 35000 to 70 odd thousand and more if you want a brand new boat. If you're going to be purchasing a project boat like our boat, this one, then you're looking at paying around £20,000, so twenty to 25000 for a, a boat that's got a really good hull. You can get some project boats for around £18,000, but you have to be so diligent and fast when it comes to purchasing those because they tend to sell really quickly. Just bear in mind that the renovation itself will be more pricey than you think it will be. So even if you spend, say, £20,000 on the boat itself, you will likely end up spending 20 grand more or 25,000 pounds more to renovate it. I did just mention that boats aren't just expensive to buy, they're expensive to maintain. And that is because everything that you get done on a boat is kind of classed, I guess, as a specialist job. So a lot of trade tradespeople don't really like working on boats. You'll be more likely to be getting your work done to the boat at a boatyard. The problem is that it tends to be quite pricey, especially if you're getting work done like welding. When you live in a metal tube, it's likely, especially with a very old boat, that you'll have to get some welding done. And this can be small jobs and that can cost you anywhere from about 250 pounds to a thousand pounds in my personal experience depending on what you need to get welded but i have heard lots of horror stories about people who have needed welding to the hull which is the bottom of the boat and that can cost a fortune so that is why it's important to get a pre-purchase survey and to try not to buy a boat that needs welding done to the hole. Maintenance can be time consuming because you have things like your engine, your engine bay, the boat itself is made of steel and steel rust. You have to do things like black the bottom of your boat every few years you're supposed to, which is something that you can pay someone to do or you can do it yourself. I paid someone to do it for me for about 300 pounds, I think, or 250. I've heard some people paying up to about 700, so you can pay someone to do it for you, you can do it yourself. The point is that there are lots of maintenance things that you have to do with a boat. And even though it's portrayed as a simple life and it can be to some degree, there's a lot involved. And it isn't just a case of living a slow, simple life and never having to do much. There's always something to do on a boat. And there's a saying that a lot of people in the boat community will tell you, which is that boat stands for bring out another thousand. And I can confirm they're not wrong. that might put you off of narrowboat life is the limited space. So if you are someone who really likes their own space and you live with a partner or you have kids, you like your own space, you like your quiet time, you might find that a little bit difficult on a narrowboat because obviously space is very limited and you can get bigger boats so you can get more space like a 70 foot narrow boat 
The problem is that when you have like 70 foot boats or you have like a wide beam or something like that, you can only go to certain parts of the UK. You can't travel everywhere because there are certain locks that you won't be able to get through with a wide beam or like a 70 foot boat so your best bet if you are hoping to do narrow boat life for travel the best kind of size to be able to get through all the locks would be like I think they say it's in the 40 to 50 something range so if you have like a 45 foot boat like we do or 50 I don't know 55 56 foot boat you'd be totally fine but if you are hoping to get a 70 foot boat or you're hoping to get a wide beam, then just know that that's gonna, unfortunately, limit your options for where you can go in the UK. Another reason why you might not be into narrowboat life is the lack of privacy. If you are moored up on the towpath, what you can expect to happen is lots of people peering through your windows, <laughs> even when you are, you know, in the bathroom, lying on your bed in your pajamas, making your coffee in the morning. And if you're outside of the boat, so you're just sat in the bow, having a nice cup of tea, enjoying the sunshine, you will likely get passers-by stopping, wanting to have a conversation, ask you questions about boat life. And it's understandable because it's a different and a unique way of life and it's something that not a lot of people know very much about and so naturally people are curious and they want to strike up conversation but if you are a very shy person or you're someone who really likes your privacy this might not be the way of life for you. Lack of privacy isn't just limited to when you're on the towpath it can also be something that you experience in a marina because in marinas all of the boats are pretty close next to each other and that means that you can look out of your windows and typically see one of your neighbours. You can see John in his briefs in the morning pouring himself a cup of tea, you know? So if you are someone who really values privacy, you're pretty shy, you don't want to be stopping and having conversations with a lot of people on a daily basis, um, you won't get that so much in a marina, but you definitely will on the towpath. So that's just something to keep in mind. Something else to be aware of is limited amenities. Because when you're living on a boat, particularly when you're out on the canals and you're not inside of a marina, you are gonna have limited water, limited gas, limited electric. And this means that you're gonna be having really short and fast two minute showers, no more long, luxurious, steamy showers like you might be used to in a house. And this might also mean that you need to be careful how much water you're using for washing up and stuff like that and careful how much electricity you use. So if this would be a problem for you, then you can either choose to stay in a house, which there's nothing wrong with, or you can choose to stay in a marina where it isn't the same as living in a house, but you still do have access to electric and water. So it's a little bit easier than living off grid on the canal. So another point to make is limited resale value because unlike a house, boats depreciate in value over time, kind of like cars do usually. So what I like to say to people is if you are thinking of buying a boat as an investment, that's not the right reason to buy one. Only buy a boat if you really love boats because for some, the prospect of buying a boat and not making back the money that you paid for it is enough to put them off. But for others, they might think that it's okay, it's worthwhile for the adventures and the memories that you're going to make on that boat. So if you're buying a boat as an investment or something along those lines, or you're not okay with losing money on the boat when it comes time for you to sell it, then it's maybe not the right thing for you.
don't buy a narrowboat just because you think it's a cheaper way of living and it's going to help you build up lots of savings because although it's true in a way for me personally I should save between 5,000 and 9,000 pounds a year compared to what I currently spend on my bills and rent however like I said in the previous point you might lose money when it comes to the resale so depending on how many years you live aboard and what kind of damage may or may not happen to your boat you might find that what you saved each year is the money that you lose on the resale. Narrowboat life can also involve a lot of physical work. For instance, sometimes you have to climb off of your boat up ladders with a rope over your shoulder and a windlass, 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 in your hand. Sometimes some locks are so difficult and hard to open that you need somebody else's help to do it. And then there are things like lots of towpath walking, having to squeeze and contort yourself into an engine bay or into a gas locker to do things like maintenance and cleaning. So things like that can be difficult and I'm not saying that that means that people over a certain age shouldn't do or try this lifestyle because I know plenty of people in their 60s, 70s, even 80s who do narrowboat life. I'm only making this point because I think that it is something to be aware of. There's also very limited residential moorings, meaning that sometimes if you're like me, at the very start of my narrowboat journey, before I'd even bought a boat, I would go for walks along the canal. I would see these pretty residential moorings where people actually lived on the canal in beautiful picturesque areas. And I just thought, that's the life. How simple and how easy it must be to just be able to moor up on the towpath somewhere for the rest of your years. That's not how it works, unfortunately. Residential moorings are very limited, meaning that unless you're very lucky and lucky enough to get one on the actual canals or somewhere like a farm, you have two options. So your options are to number one, continuous cruise, which means that you can keep cruising continuously on the canals and you have to move every two weeks unless you're in an area where it specifies that you can only stay for a few days or you can moor in a marina. So if you aren't keen on the idea of living in a marina where you're going to have boats usually moored on either side of you and there's that lack of privacy or you aren't keen on the idea of moving your boat every couple of weeks because maybe you have a job that is limited to one area, for instance, then you might wanna think of different options instead of boat life. I know that I said I had 10 points for why you should not buy a narrow boat, but I'm actually gonna give you two more. The first is disposing of your own toilet waste. For me, this isn't a problem, but if you get really grossed out by that kind of a thing, then for you, it might be. And I hate to bring it up, but I'm going to. <laughs> there are gonna be times where you might even have to, you know, poop in a bag if your toilet is full or something, or like pee in a bag or go and like do it in the woods or do it in the bushes. And if that is not your style, then, you know, a house might be the better option or a marina as well because usually marinas will have some toilets on site so you don't necessarily have to always use the toilet in your boat and my final point is that you will have to learn a million new skills if you want to live on a boat because the fact of the matter is that things break all the time on boats there's always jobs to do on boats and sometimes you're not in a place an area that is easily accessible for tradespeople to come and do work on your boat or you might find it really difficult to find a tradesperson who 
is happy to come and work on the boat. So that's why you'll find yourself learning lots of new skills like electrics and plumbing and all the other stuff that comes with owning a boat, engine maintenance, that sort of stuff. So if you are someone who just isn't interested in doing any of that stuff ever, it might not be like a point that puts you off completely from boat life, but it might be something to take into consideration, especially if you buy an old boat. But if you can withstand all of this, I think you're gonna have the time of your life on a narrow boat. For me, I really enjoyed it when we first bought the boat. We did a 100 mile cruise to bring the boat from where it first was, which was in Doncaster, all the way to Staffordshire. So we did a brilliant 100 mile cruise. It was so much fun. I got to meet so many wonderful people on the canals, so many friendly boaters and really get a feel for what being a part of this community is like and what living on the waterways is like as well and I loved it it was honestly so much fun and we saw so many incredible views so if you can withstand so if you can withstand everything that I mentioned in this video then go for it I think that boat life could be a wonderful fit for you and like I mentioned at the start of this video I am going to make a separate one all about 10 reasons why you should buy a narrow boat. This video obviously has been pretty general and not all of the points are going to apply to everyone so it's always best to make your own pros and cons list before buying something like a boat and I would really recommend going and living on one for a while or finding one on Airbnb that you can stay in, hiring a boat to cruise for a day, just so you can get a feel for it and see if it's something that you would enjoy in the long term. And if you've enjoyed this video and you've learned something from it, then please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so that you don't miss the video about 10 reasons why you should buy a narrow boat likes and subscribes really help us grow this channel so we really appreciate it by the way i have only been a boat owner for almost one year so i'm not a you know wildly experienced years under my belt kind of a boat owner i am just telling you what i've learned from my almost one year of experience and from the other boaters that i've talked to if you want more advice you can just ask me your questions in the comments below and you can also go and check out a canal forum i will link to that in the description which is really helpful it's full of boaters and people who work on boats and if you ask your questions there you'll always get some very uh intensive is that the word detailed replies you can have to, you know, take out the number ones and number twos in their compartments and dispose of them in an LSAN, an LSAN point. Bye. just left the house in a rush this morning so I did not do my hair I just put a hat on okay that'll do that'll do forgot what I was going to say what was it what was it reason number one oh I've got hair in my eye another <laughs> why why did I have to ruin that shot <laughs> 